Hello, my name is Garx82, and welcome back to my Greg Tech New Horizon series. Uh, in between episodes, I sorted out all my Satane boosted diesel. So we finally got that going into my generators. I got that set up, and then I set everything up. Basically, just crafted a few fluid generators, hooked them all up to my A network. So all my fluids and stuff are being inputted and really quickly I'll just go down um, or putting nitrogen in here canning it sending it to here which is hydrogen is being inputted and then we're producing ammonia here we're canning the oxygen and combining it with ethylene to create acetic acid then we're creating the acetate solution which we're creating the acetone ethanone and then combining this with the nitric acid that we're producing in our large chemical reactor to produce this tetronitromethane. I have another canner on the back, which is canning the nitric acid. And then that's combining it with the diesel to get the cetane boosted diesel. And here is another fluid canner, which is canning the, the diesel. And then these canners, it's basically just jumping back and forth. Um, so as we saw, there we go, it'll pull that out put it back in here, fill it, and then put it back. So there it goes. Um, so that is everything completely automated with that. I have my large chemical reactor producing the nitric acid, but I do have a level emitter here set to 16 buckets of nitric acid. It'll turn off the redstone signal whenever I pass that in my ME system, and I have 42 buckets. So it is no longer producing the nitric acid. Um, so yeah, I love the Satane Boosted Diesel just because it produces the most EU when it's being burned. Um, and curious is that it doesn't look like it's burning, but I'm pretty sure it is burning. Um, burning uh, the diesel. Yeah, there is, it looks like there is two amps going through there. Yeah, so we can tell, if we look at this, the, the buffer is not completely full. So that means uh, it is powering, the power is going out. I do have this running again um, because I was getting a bit low on oil. Um, So trying to decide how I want to proceed here, um, I'm kind of at the EV and IV age. I'm kind of at the border. I don't think I'm ready to quite push into the IV age yet. We look at the machine holds. Uh, tungsten steel is kind of the gate for IV age, but um, I don't... I don't know if we're, I'm quite ready to do that yet. I still have quite a lot of LV machines and stuff. And um, yeah, I'm trying to figure out exactly how I want to proceed here. Um, I have kind of gone through most of the EV age here. Tungsten steel is kind of my, uh, my gates. I think this will probably open up the next age. I'm assuming if we go down this route, um, the other option is to possibly get into some nuclear power here. So that could also uh, help. Um, so why don't I take a look around and kind of see what I want to do in this episode. All right. So I think I have decided to let's try out the nuclear reactor. I think um, power is kind of my bottleneck right here. Um, one of the things is running my blast furnace, uh, for like tungsten steel and this titanium, uh, it needs almost 2000 EU per tick. And I am obviously not producing that. These two produce 512 and that one produces 400. So I'm not even really producing one amp of EV power. So just by running this and absolutely nothing else in my base, I am losing power uh, trying to do the titanium or tungsten steel. 
And then that doesn't even account for uh, having to run my drilling rig here, which is running at HV as well. Um, so I kind of have to have that going to produce the oil. I'll turn it off when I get kind of closer, but uh, for now it kind of needs to be run. And also the my AE network, as I've expanded it, we're up to 500 EU per tick. So I'm using it like an entire, almost an entire HV uh, amp here just to power my A system. So like just this generator is powering my A system. So whatever is left over, it has to run the rest of my base. So I am struggling a bit here on power. Uh, so like I said, I think I'm going to craft up the nuclear reactor. Uh, it's been, it's 10 times. So hopefully we will, it'll be worth it, even if it's just a small reactor at first, and then maybe I can uh, expand it later. Now the nuclear reactor isn't overly complicated to craft, but it needs a lot of titanium. I need, each of these require two, and then the actual reactor itself requires, so three of those, so two, four, six, eight. So I need eight dense titanium, and each of these dense titanium is nine ingots, so I need 72 titanium. Um, and I only have 15, 16. Um, so I'm gonna have to craft up a bunch of titanium here. I'm going to get my uh, rutile, and uh, I'm going to get this going, the titanium, I forget what it's called. Um, just because trying to craft up or smelting this stuff, it's much easier, but holy cow, does it take power. I can only do a few ingots at once, and then these are like completely drained. Um, so let me go ahead and craft up this nuclear reactor, and we'll come back and we will check it out. All right, so I've got this uh, going. I'm crafting up the uh, dense lead. I think I've got enough titanium. Just need to throw this in my vacuum freezer. I'm waiting for this to go up just a little bit. So I am like really struggling on power here. It was good for a while, but all of a sudden, um, the, yeah, I'm struggling. I think it's because I automated all my <laughs> stuff downstairs. I added a bunch of uh, components to the A. Alright, so that's going. We'll just kind of let that go. Yeah, I have enough titanium. Alright, so the other thing that we need is fuel rods and fuel rods. Let's see, there's that. I don't have that machine though? Bending machine. All right. So we need, I'm going to need six of these. So I need 12 iron casings. And doesn't the extruder do that? Oh, I can actually throw it in a... No, why don't we just do it that way? I don't know if that's the most efficient, but... Actually, I, I'm using my... Oh, I have another. What am I talking about? All right. Uh, yeah, I want... What is it? I already forgot. <laughs> so how many... It's two to make these, right? Or is it one? Yeah, it's two to make those. So... I think it's... Yeah, it's just one... One iron each. I'm like way overthinking this. Right? And then I'll just cut these down. This should go pretty quick. I'm running low on lubricant here. The fuel rods, what is the, the two? I may have a two in here. Yeah. All right, so there is the fuel rods. Now, I 
think I have all the machines needed to can this stuff. And I'm going to have to switch out into my radioactive gear here <clears throat> with the space helmet on, apparently. That's funny. That should be fuel rods. Yep. Perfect. Let me just switch this back so I don't forget. I just saw, I thought I saw a charge. I did see charge sort of squirt somewhere. I don't remember why that was in there. All right, so lead, what's going on with this? I can make, yeah, I need more. Just gonna take some time, the slow recipe. So the fuel rods, let's just take a look. Oh, it only needs the fuel rods. Doesn't need anything else. See how we craft the. All right, so it's just a candy machine. I... Yeah, they're like two. Is that like the IC two? Yeah, I think that's the IC two version. It just looked weird, but there is the regular candy. All right, so that's easy enough. Um, rod lithium. Didn't know that was a thing. So I'm thinking fuel rod uranium. How do we get this? So uranium, tiny polar uranium. All right, so you get that from just compressing. That's easy enough. I think the other one is thermal centrifuging, isn't it? The uranium. compressing and we get this from yeah thermal <clears throat> or washing 235 I don't have 235 though rust strange ore yeah it's you get it from yeah and I do have 238. All right. So I'm going to have to thermal centrifuge that and then this compresses down. So that's actually not too bad. Um, it looks like six of these. Yeah. Um, what do I do with this? Can I pulverize that? I do get thorium if I pulverize it, so I might as well. All right. So let me get enough for this thor uh, this uranium. Don't remember... Here it is. So yeah, I have plenty of uranium. <clears throat> yeah, of course, because I got it for that as well. All right, so let me do some processing here, and then hopefully when we come back, I will have everything built. Okay, so crafting everything, got everything's going along swimmingly, and I went to craft the last component, which is platinum cable, so I was did the platinum cables and threw it in the assembler and realized it wasn't working. And the reason for that is because now this is considered like one of the higher tier cables. I cannot coat it with just plain old rubber anymore. So I am gonna have to either get silicon rubber or this styrene butadine rubber. And I think I'm just gonna do molten silicon rubber because um, I do plan on, I had planned on replacing it anyway, regular rubber. Um, but I think it uses less, it looks like it uses the same amount as, uh, yeah, it looks like it uses the same as the other one, I think. So maybe they are similar, but uh, I think the silicon rubber is just easier to make. Now, I believe there is a quest. Yeah. Although I'm probably not going to do that much because it needs yeah two chlorine and one methane. I don't even think I have 84 chlorine, to be honest. Uh, I may. I'm converting this back. Uh, so maybe...
I am producing methane down here. I yeah, I think I'm just gonna do enough for the I don't know, should I just do the quest? I might as well do the quest. Yeah, let me get the chloromethane. Um, I basically just need some more chlorine, and then I'm also going to need to wait for it to... Um, oops. I'm throwing things all over the place. I'm going to need to wait for this distillery to craft up the methane as well, because that's not like instant. All right, I changed my mind. I'm not going to wait. Uh, it's going to take me, it's going to take a while to get the 42 um, chloromethane. So I'm just going to go with this to get this done. Um, I'll finish this probably later. All right, so I need to put that there. I don't want, I don't want that to connect. All right, so this needs, let me pull all this out. Uh, chloromethane and silicon is it? Yeah. So chloroform or chloromethane, silicon will get you this dimethyl something something. I can't remember. That should just go in there like that. Yep. And that will be the, yeah, di, dimethyl dichlorosilane. That stuff. And then this stuff will go back in the, I think it goes back in the chemical reactor, although I need to take that out. The chlorine. get that out of there. Uh, the reason I'm using this one is because it needs a it needs an MV chemical reactor and I don't have one set up. I could set up one down there but I'm not gonna worry about that. All right so the let's do silicon rubber that's it's poly something isn't it poly yeah this one. So in a chemical reactor, we got to do what would be the easiest way. <clears throat> Probably this one. So we'll just put it back in with some water cells with a 11. So push. That's not hooked up right. I, Let's, uh, we'll unhook that just so we don't lose it anywhere. All right, so I need the water cells. So I have six buckets. So it's a one-to-one. -one. I feel like I'm not gonna get a whole lot of silicon out of this, but uh, we'll see. There is that. And do I have any... No circuits on me. I think I said 11, didn't I? Just double check so I get the right thing that I want. Yeah, 11. All right. And then, of course, uh, I will figure out how to get this automated uh, in between episodes. Uh, it just takes me some time to kind of do testing and see where I want to put it and everything. All right, so yeah, you don't get too much. You only get three per one 
one bucket of that stuff gets you three. Um, Alright, so I'm going to throw that there. I'll hook that back up. Oops. So just the, that will fill with chlorine again. Mm -hmm. Or actually, I have it unhooked. All right. So to get this, um, I guess we'll take that out. I don't know if I'm fully ready to replace the rubber with the silicon rubber yet. Before I auto up with that, this turns into, you know what? I think I'm gonna turn it into that. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn it into ingots. I'm pretty sure that'll work. And then I will just melt it down like this. I'll just melt it down as needed. Let me just go ahead and put that rubber back in. Because um, right now I only need it for, uh, what do I need, push? Yeah. Yeah, so there's the silicon rubber bars. And then I'll just throw those in the fluid extractor. That works, I think. So I need, how many do I need for this is the question. Easier if I do it this way. All right, so there's a couple ways to do it. You can either add some pulp and use uses less, I think, or you have it use more. So see now, now that I'm looking at this, this is actually like, they're weird amounts. Let me figure out which one I want to do here. All right, I think I'm going to do this recipe. It, it's probably not the most efficient right now, but I haven't done all the number crunching or anything, but just a platinum wire, more platinum, and some silicon rubber. Throw that in there. Need to 24, and then I will just throw that in. Unfortunately, it's not an even amount. Oh, that was three. Okay, I thought it said eight. It was hard to, it was a bit hard to read. That's three. Um, I have half an ingot left over, which is a bit annoying, but I'm just gonna pull that out and throw it in my uh, yummy system. And when I need it, it'll be there. All right, so I think that is that, yep. So there is the nuclear reactor and my six fuel rods. There we go. It's gonna do a thermal monitor. I don't really know how these work, but we will find out. Now what else did that open up? All right. The nuke, you can cause some real catastrophic damage. You can either place it 20 chunks away. <laughs> 20 chunks away. All right. So fuse quartz is blast resistant. That's good to know. And then here's the different fuels. I'm probably gonna do uranium. So this is requiring me to get two fuel rods. Now I did all the centrifuging here. So thankfully you do get one of these. So I guess we'll do, I think it was, wasn't it just a compressing recipe? Yeah, so that'll compress that down. Then I need 36 of that. All right. 
So that may get me that with the fuel rods. And then the rest of the thing components, I'm going to have to... Not going to do that yet. I'm going to have to craft up these components now. I'm probably not going to have all of these in my thing at once. Although you do get two... As a quest reward. Um, so that needs that. Problem is, like, some of these, like, these advanced heat things use two overclock things. All right. So let me, uh, again, <laughs> I have to keep cutting here because there's a bunch of crafting that needs to be done. Um, there's the tiny pile. Uh, let me craft up the rest of the components that I want to do for this small design. It's not going to be very fancy at first, um, but let me go ahead and get this crafted up. So after a bunch of crafting, it actually wasn't that terrible. This just require, um, like iron, copper, silver, and gold, basically, and some stainless. But other than that, it really wasn't too terrible. Let me throw this back in here. I don't know, I'll throw that in there for now, just in case I need the dents, which I probably will need. All right, so I have 12 components that I need to craft up the rest of the things here. It's just double check I have my hazmat suit on because these will cause radiation oh wait these need to be is there a request for that? no yes no just the fuel rods so the enriched oh right I need coolant and the coolant was so I need six buckets of this So just six lapis with distilled water. That's actually not bad. Except I have no lapis. Oh, I have plenty of lapis. What am I talking about? And I hooked up my, I think I hooked my mixer up to, didn't I? Yeah, distilled, yeah, I did. Easy enough. Throw that in. There we go. So there's our coolant. I wish there was like a... Like if you put cells here, like it would input it into cells. As opposed to having to do it like into a tank and then put the move the tank around or put it in cells or I don't know. I know it's like an extra kind of part of like the trying to figure out the processes, but I find it a bit annoying at times having to move these around constantly. Now this is, I think it's in the assembler, right? You're enriched. Yeah. Enriched uranium, yeah. And there we go. How long does that take? All right, not too bad. So let's go ahead and while that's crafting up, we'll uh, set up the nuclear reactor now. I know it's probably not the safest just having this out in the middle of nowhere, but this um, that feels like really weird. Um, yeah, I should have this enclosed so if it explodes, but the um, this setup that I'm doing I know is very stable. I've done it multiple times before. Let me just double check I get this right. All right. 
Then we'll have the six cells at the bottom. So that is completely stable. So this is never going to blow up unless something goes terribly wrong. Um, but hopefully it doesn't. The enriched is there. And we'll throw it in the candy machine. And that's actually really quick as well. <clears throat> And last but not least, we do need a lever. All right, so then if I want to, I can create dual rods and quad rods. Um, right now though, not gonna do that. Um, but basically just throw the fuel rods in with the design. And hopefully we have no explosions here. Maybe I should do a quick backup before I do this because I just don't want to lose a ton of work here. All right. So in theory, I should be able to just <laughs> Click the switch on and it should be outputting into my reactor. I just don't, this can accept 2000. I don't think this is gonna be doing any more than 2000. Um, I'm like so nervous here though. Yep, all right, so we're good. Let's just double check this doesn't go up. I don't think it is. It should be fine. All right, but as we can see, the EU per tick is 10 times. So this would normally do 100. So you gotta be a little careful. So if this was like doing 200 or 250 and then I, uh, like if this design does usually 250 and then I turned it on and it was doing 2,500, it would have made that explode. And I'm, I think that's going in there. And now I'm like questioning this. Let's turn this off. And I think it's, yeah, those, these things feel so weird, but obviously I'm not, if I only had the one thing on, it would be the, my turbine. And that would uh, that would only be 420. So even though this is like off, is it okay? So is that not? How am I using more than a thousand like that, or 1400 and something? That seems a bit crazy to me that that would be going down even with this. Does this need to be output into something? I thought this would automatically output into... Okay, apparently if you right click them, they <laughs> just breaks it totally. Um, I thought it automatically output it into an adjacent thing, but that doesn't seem to be the case if this was going down. Um, let me try this. Maybe. And if not, we will, I'll have to do it into like an MSU or something. I'm not, oh, is it not converting the power? I may need to have a space in between. I'm totally guessing here, by the way. I don't really know. <laughs> But it is IC2 power. That might be the issue. So let's do. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. We'll try the two amp. I don't think I would need two amps. It should be only one amp. I did a backup. So if I have some crazy explosion here, then I can restore it because I'm kind of just testing here. So these should convert. 
So let's see. Like if we do this, does it connect? It does connect. All right, so one more time. Double check I have that right. And then this, yeah, see that's still going down. There's no way that should be going down. All right, I still don't feel like that is, oh wait. So there, that jumped way up. Maybe the internal buffer. All right, so there, okay. Now it's running. So it looks like you do need a Greg Tech cable in between um, to convert the IC2 power into Greg Tech power, but there we go. So in theory, if I have, I could have all of these running. And I would have, what about 1,000, 1,400? Yeah, I have about 2,500 going into this. Yep, there we go. That makes this much easier to run now. Let me, if I throw this in here. I think it goes, yeah, it's nitrogen I think it uses. So that's using 2400 or 2048. And there we go. That is not going down at all. So perfect. Now we have definitely boosted our power gen here. Now these will slowly tick down as we can see. They're, uh, the durability. There's 20,000 durability on these fuel rods. So I'm going to probably get, you know, 36 of these fuel rods. I'm not going to do any automation with this. This is going to be purely manual. Um, so uh, I can keep an eye on this. Um, if I had it in a, an enclosed space, I would automate it. But since this is way out in the open, I don't want anything explosions. So I want to just do this all entirely manual for the moment. Um, but there we go have everything running. I have this going like full blast at 2048 and we are, I mean, we're slowly going down power now, but uh, and I can have that pretty much running permanently. But anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. Uh, next episode, uh, not entirely sure what I want to do, which is kind of <laughs> what is usually the case. I like to kind of just see how I'm feeling when I start recording for the day um, but I still need a distillation tower for sure because I have these three running and this these are running like just constantly and I would be getting a much better bang for my buck if I had a distillation tower but now that I can run my EBF I can get a lot more stainless going and it's just much easier but anyway that's gonna be it for this episode so thanks for watching and have a good one